in January. We're projected out right now to make two million this year. Being able to be dynamic and know where your leads are coming from yeah. is so important. You need a good website. You don't need the sexiest website ever. Know your numbers, stay accountable, make sure that you your team knows that too. You owe it to yourself and your team to get bigger. For going on two years, I've partnered with service scalers to do our Google ads, PPC, and SEO. And the results have been huge. It's been really exciting to watch as our website consistently jumps up rank as we're using more technology and we're moving faster than our peers who are all using legacy home service marketing companies. We use service scalers for PPC, our local SEO, our on-page website SEO, and our LSA. So give them a call if you're looking for leads. Is SEO really needed when it seems to take so long to spin up and be such a long game? My default answer is yes, but it also depends. Where are you at? Are you starting up? Are you, do you even have a truck yet? Probably not, mm -hmm. right? Like if you're just getting started, I'm probably not spinning up an SEO uh, game plan. Um, I think SEO makes the most sense when you get to a place in your business where you start wanting to invest in future you. You're like, yeah, right now I'm pretty close to capacity and I can't really get more leads uh, without having to go hire a whole new truck and I'm not really ready there. Okay, well then start investing that that money that you have into a future version of yourself so so that you can start driving leads two, three, six, eight months down the line. That's when I think that you should start. And that's gonna be different for everybody, depending on your growth path, depending on how fast you're able to grow your team. But I absolutely, um, I think, uh, what is it? 80% of our SEO clients are hitting their target lead volume, meaning they're running SEO with us. And yeah. they're hitting that cost per lead that they need on SEO. So like people like this is a game to go win. Works, yeah. And the thing that makes SEO special is once you get to the top, it's really hard to dethrone the king. Yeah, yeah. Google ads, we're all paying the cost per click. Anybody yeah. can come in and play that game at any point and outbid you. It's really hard to outbid bid somebody uh, on SEO. You just have to be yeah. better at them at the game. My context here on the contractor side is, I'll, I'll hit the last one first. Like there's a company in our market that was really early to the SEO game 10 years ago. And they're still kicking my butt on SEO. And like we're hitting SEO really, really hard. Like it's been, we've done it really effective. Um, and they're still kicking my butt. And uh, the other one, I just want to touch on like, the timelines that you use like six eight months three months i feel like that's reasonable and like correct me if i'm wrong here obviously like you guys like helped us with our uh, programmatic and you guys helped us with our strategy on seo and when i think about seo like quantity is as much of a part of the conversation now as quality yeah i mean if, if you're only doing two articles a month <laughs> literally everybody's yeah. doing that you can't win uh, yeah. it's, it's like investing $10 a month in the, the stock market. Like, I mean, yeah, it's better than nothing, but like, you're not going to retire on that. Um, so in our, our game, we want to add a minimum 10 articles. Um, obviously after you've gotten all your service pages, after you've gotten like all the foundations of what make a good SEO, uh, website. Uh, then once we get into the organic spot where we're just driving as much blogs to your, uh, site as possible, 10 to me is the minimum. I really want to do closer to 30, um, just cause I'm, uh, I'm aggressive. I don't want to play. And, and here's yeah. the thing from, from my end as an agency, I know that in 12 months, you're going to ask me the question of, do I stay with service scalers or do I go somewhere else? And so it is in my best interest to make that as aggressive as possible to get you as results as quick as possible. Cause in 12 months, I want you to go, all right, yeah, that was great. Let's do it again. And so that's why we play the little bit more aggressive game. Selfishly, we want you to be clients with us forever. Um, and then it really does help you on that end as well. Next question. What are the top KPIs I need to track daily for my marketing? One, it, I hate this answer. It depends. Um, but like, it really does depend on like what marketing that you are tracking. 
in my opinion, all your marketing should go back to an ROI, should go back to some sort of revenue. And so like whether you're doing radio, TV ads, billboards, all those are going to be different KPIs that you should probably track. However, everything eventually gets to uh, the funnel, which is how many, uh, how many leads do we generate? How many appointments do we generate? How much revenue do we generate from that? those? Um, and I think if you could track everything to those three numbers, those are the most important. If you don't know those numbers, what are you doing as a business owner? <laughs> you know, like e even I, like as an agency, I know how many leads we generate. I know many first uh, meetings have sat and I know how much revenue has happened over the, uh, this last week. So definitely those. Um, clicks are good. Impressions good. You can dig into the details uh, and you should know those numbers, but those aren't numbers that you have to have in your head. Um, ultimately, how many leads are coming through? How many of those turn into appointment? How much is how much? How many of those appointments turn into revenue? Well, I guess that's yeah daily for marketing. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I mean I basically agree. So daily quantity of leads. How many leads do I need for tomorrow? How many leads do I need for the next day? How do I stay on top of it? And then the big one is like, what's your book rate? Because um, that's obviously going to determine quite a bit. So. Uh, and ideally book rate by channel. That's what we really like to look at. So, hey, if I get a book rate, um, you know, we had this thing last year where our book rate was like 30% on LSAs, which sucks because LSAs are $80 a piece. So we're getting this like $30 on LSA book rate and 30% book rate. So it's like $240 basically per lead. And then I still have to like, you know, go convert that into a sale. So it's really challenging. So when you can track it by a lead source it should be daily service tight unless you like figure that out you can tweak so like what we did immediately was we dropped our service fee on lsa leads we're like all right anytime there's an lsa lead no service fee that's going to increase our book rate and it did it went up to 60 some percent doubled our book rate which meant we needed way less phone calls to run the same amount of leads so that was hugely valuable yeah, absolutely. Um, and and I, I think that you, your comment about knowing the source of those leads is super important as well, um, right? Like there, when we were using universal analytics, it was so much easier to track source. And since Google has gone to GA4, they're limiting how much you can actually tell. Um, and so you, but you still should be able to get pretty darn close. Um, and we actually just ran into, and this is not the first time we've hit this, this situation, but the second time where a client has come and said, hey, look, you guys are saying you're driving a bunch of phone calls, but when we are, we aren't getting those numbers. And we're like, dang, what, did we mess up the tracking? Like what happened? We ended up realizing what he is tracking is every single time a phone, somebody calls in, they ask you, how did you hear about us? And so they were taking that and they were like, okay, that that is you know, most people are just coming from us uh, through SEO or directly to the site. And it's like, well, actually most of those, if we actually, you know, use call rail service time, you can actually tell the source is Google ads. And so some of that is just making sure you have your tracking set up correctly and you're yeah. pulling through from a correct source. Yeah. Um, Cause that, that situation happens sometimes. Um, well, and the right way to handle that, like there's two different, there's your side, where like, hey, we're gonna set that up so we can track the click, basically, like, do they click on the website? And that's how, I mean, that's how you track it, right? Yeah. Like there's an action, yeah, which makes sense. Um, and then on the contractor side, best way to do this is you set up a different phone number. So like mm -hmm. if somebody calls and then you just, you can double verify, right? So, um, because the bigger you get and the more money you spend on marketing, like you really need to know like where those phone calls are coming from. Like I just described like two minutes ago, I was like, hey, we found out our book rate on this one single lead source. I have like 500 lead sources. One single one sucked. And I was able to identify it and solve it because, we, because it had one phone number. So we knew exactly where those leads were coming from so we could solve problems. So yep. like your, the phone number you have on your trucks should be different than the one on your website. And that should be different from the one on your Google My Business profile. And that should be different from your LSA phone number. And all of these should be different numbers. That way, anytime a lead comes in via call, 
you know exactly where that lead came from. And there's just no confusion. Yeah, absolutely. I've, in fact, I had a conversation on Monday where uh, this guy who wants to be super aggressive just bought this company. He's got four plumbing techs that are just literally sitting on their hands, not doing anything. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I need 10 phone calls a day at an $80 cost per lead. What do we do? I was like, well, one, you just multiply that out and that's 25 grand. So we're gonna spend 25 grand. And he's like, great, let's do it. I was like, but I would probably split that between LSA and Google Ads, right? Yeah. He's like, no, I wanna do everything in Google Ads. It's like, we can, but what, ha what happens if LSA actually has a better cost per lead? Yeah. If, yeah. if you know your sources, hey, LSA is costing me $60 cost per lead and has a booking rate at 50%. Google Ads has a cost per lead at, you know, call it $100. Uh, and the booking percent is like 20%. It's like, look, like double your budget LSA, throw it there. So that like being able to be dynamic and know where your leads are coming from yeah. is so important to be able to make sure that your team has as many leads possible with as little budget as possible. Yeah, and being nimble. Yeah, I totally agree. How do I increase client acquisition and appeal to better clients? Is this a marketing thing? <laughs> uh, I'll give my quick spiel here and then I'd love to hear your perspective, but the definition that I internally use for marketing is marketing is the act of choosing who we want to work for as like, that's it. So like, yeah, 100%, that's a marketing decision. Like marketing is who we're sending out a bat signal and we want a specific customer segment to respond to that bat signal. So yeah, that's marketing. Uh, I think in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I think that there's a couple things that you should be doing on on our end that would help with you. If you have the copy of cheapest you know, cheapest home service company in the area, like you're just gonna get the cheap, like you get people with no money. Um, if you have a higher price point, then you might choose zip codes that can afford that price point, right? If you're a luxury home remodeler. Like you probably just like want to avoid certain zip codes uh, if you can to, to get the most out of those Google ads. Um, I would avoid big time discount codes. Like you offering me a hundred dollars off my whatever, my HVAC unit literally made no difference in my mind. I want somebody that I don't have to babysit, come in, do a really good job and, and, and leave. Uh, now, Grant, I'm probably not your average person. I literally know nothing about plumbing. You know, uh, I know blue is cold and red's hot. Like I, that, that's that's probably the extent of my plumbing knowledge. Um, and so, like, but I'm willing to also pay up a little bit more for somebody that is, you know, that that does a good job. So, from a marketing copy standpoint, like, what's going to appeal to me is more about like, we don't cut corners versus here's your two hundred dollars off. Uh, don't get me wrong those those coupons can work and sometimes like shoulder season like those are the things we want to drive more conversations you're willing to to give a little bit more discounts to close deals fine on the marketing side let's make sure our copy matches the language that we want to and the audience that we want to attract once they get in surprise and delight is always kind of a a, a good way to go about it showing up you know um you know, looking professional uh the language you use uh, to communicate, mirroring the person that you're you're engaging with, not coming across pushy, doing educational uh, conversations, like all of those things, I, I think make a big difference on uh, appealing better to to those clients. I think the last item here is just like, you know, where are you sending the bat signal, and are you giving content that would that somebody would respond to? Um, that you want. But yeah, the short answer and long answer is 100% that is a marketing thing. I would also say like sometimes people put too much emphasis on some marketing that you don't necessarily need to. Uh, like you need a good website. You don't need the sexiest website ever. Like this is this is not shoes on an e-commerce shop, right? Like yeah. this is not like um, an overpriced bag. Like yeah. We're, we're HVAC, we're plumbing, we're roofing, yep. make sure it's professional, clear, uh, and gets the job done. Um, anytime you create a blocker or a barrier to entry inside of your 
uh, sales process or funnel, mm -hmm. I think those are things that are going to be more of a turnoff than not having like the greatest, you know, sexiest website ever. Um, don't get me wrong, we can create really beautiful, high converting websites, but also I wouldn't like, I wouldn't go out and spend 50 grand on a, a website. That yeah. doesn't make sense to me in this, this industry. Okay, this is an interesting one. What is best in class cost per lead in CAC, which is cost per acquired customer for new install leads across channels? My feedback here is I can give what our numbers are, but what it looks like in Northeast Ohio is going to be real different from what it looks like in Chicago or rural bumfuck wherever. So it's it's really kind of challenging to come up with a great benchmark. Yeah, I have a lot of friends that pay twice what I do for for uh, for leads. So I think the on the contractor side, I think it's more important that um, is is it costed in your job? Like what what's the most you can pay? Uh, so we like to think of it. Um, it, whoever can pay the most wins. How about that? So instead of like, how do we pay the least amount for a lead? How can we pay the most? And how can that be costed into our structure? Because if I'm paying like Angie's list $200 for an HVAC replacement lead and my conversion rate, which means what percentage of leads do I close? Let's say that's 33% for marketed leads. So I would have to get three leads at $500 or $250 a piece. So I paid $750 to acquire that installation. And I'm good with that because my average install is 12,000 something dollars for that business unit. So that's 6% of revenue and I'm okay with that. So I think that that's the better way to attack it is you work backwards from your average ticket and your conversion rate and what can I afford to pay? And the game should be not how do I pay the lowest, the game should be how do I pay the most? Because if you can pay the most and it works inside your cost structure, then you're never gonna have shortage of leads. Agreed. Uh, the only thing caveat I would say there is that's the game you should play, but not the game you should tell your agency to play. Uh, the, yeah. your yes. age, <laughs> yes, you know, okay. good point. <laughs> you know, uh, so go back to your agency, and we, we do the same thing. Like, we got a Facebook ads agency right now working with us on ads, and uh, we tell them a much lower cost per lead than we need to actually make that CAC work. Um, and that's what you're paying for them to do mm -hmm. is to get you a good source of leads and keep getting that cheaper. Uh, and if they can't try to try to figure out why, right? Is it yeah. truly just because, you know, they're not running tests? Is it because they're not, mm -hmm. uh, they're bidding on too high of keywords? Is it just the market's too high, right? Like if you're in Las Vegas, there's just no way you're getting an $80 cost per lead. It's just not yeah. like, I love that yeah. idea. Not happening. Um, yeah. Whereas I've, I've, we've got some accounts right now running $15 cost per lead, yeah. which is absurd. And it's because they're in a very specific market mm -hmm. that there is no competition and we're just literally running it up. Um, and so like, you know, it, it, your, your area is going to matter. Um, and then again, the way you engage your, your agency or your, yeah. even your internal marketing team should be very different than the way you engage you know, or you actually play the game. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I totally agree. So I think if we're working backwards on the question, just to give people the math one more time. So if I, if I have, um, if I have a, let's do a smaller job than $10,000. So if I have like a water heater replacement and my water heater, pull on my calculator, my water heater replacements are, let's say like 2,800 bucks. And this is where you need good data, but like, what's your closing rate on water heaters? Uh, so my closing rate on water heaters is, I think it's 60%. So $2,800 and I'm willing to pay up to 10% of that job to, to get the job. So I have $280 to spare uh, to like basically pay for the leads. Okay, so I'm at $280 and I close two out of three, uh, leads. So I'm just going to do this that times 0.6. So I, I could pay, I pay like 130 bucks for the lead. 
Uh, and I feel good about that. And I can go up to 150 if I need to, because 160 if I need to really, because I am going to close more than half of those leads. So that's, I'm actually kind of surprised you brought it up a few times that like people really like dive into, it sounds like in their engagement call, like, Hey, here's what I, you said that one guy was like, Hey, I need an $80 cost per lead. Like my quick take, um, I really doubt that people know what they need cost per lead. So work through the math that I just like walked you through, because I think cost per lead is a good thing to know, but it's not the thing to optimize around because I'm okay with paying $160 for a water heater lead because I'm going to close 60% of them. And that still meets my, my metric. And if I'm saying, Hey, I needs to be under $80. Um, like what am I, what am I missing out on? What lead channels am I refusing to use? Because it, I want a very cheap cost per lead. Uh, so it's a good metric, but I think it's hard to like declare it. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. We got a couple more questions here. Is there such, this is, a, this is a, this will be, this will be interesting. Is there such a thing as a business being too small to afford a marketing company uh, like service scalers? We had a couple major pain points uh, earlier this year. And those pain points were, how do we contact our unsold estimates more frequently? How do we book our membership appointments faster? How do we stay in contact with customers and let them know that we have promotions? And how do we run a speed to lead process for Angie's leads? When looking around for solutions, we saw a couple great uh, softwares on the market, but our favorite one was Hatch. So when we started using Hatch, we had just switched over from another vendor and Hatch's user interface was so easy. It directly tied into service Titan. It automated the workflow of five or six employees a day. We're now in contact with hundreds of additional customers. We're selling a ton of our unsold estimates, and it's easier than ever to book our membership follow-up appointments. So Hatch has been a really big win for us. In order to book a demo with Hatch, click the link below. Um, yeah, I think so. Like, if you, if if John, you and I, we're like, we burn everything down. You and I are going to go start a, a home service company, plumbing company no, in. Good. Las Vegas. This is gonna be just fun. Another, just another Wednesday. <laughs> just another Let's Wednesday. Um, and we literally only have the money we have, right? We're not going out and investing. We're not getting I'm money. Both. We're we're so, starting from scratch. Yeah. Like, I'm not about to go spend thousands of dollars for someone to manage LSA and Google Ads yeah. and SEO. I'm just not like. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to these aggregates and I'm gonna go play the Facebook gr uh, groups game where I, you know, try to get as many leads as possible and then spend, mm -hmm. like you're, you're definitely going to be overspending cost per lead on these aggregates, right? Like, um, yeah. thumbtack, Angie's list, you know, yeah. but yeah. like at least your money is going to a cost per lead versus yeah. somebody managing it. Once yeah. we get into a place where that you are ready to get that cost per lead down because it's worth it, that's mm -hmm. when I would go to that. So, um, I think if you're, you're only wanting to spend two to three grand tops on all marketing i think you're probably probably better off just putting that into the market go go watch some youtube videos or or jo join our lsa uh webinar we run through exactly how to run an lsa account uh or message me man we'll, we'll, you and i can yeah. jump on i'll teach you how to run lsa and you'll go on from there um, so yeah. run lsa on your own uh watch some youtube videos to learn how to do it get your gp uh Google business profile, I'm trying to get the new acronym form. I wouldn't say Google my business. Um, mm -hmm. up, uh, I would get, you know, work on um, the aggregate. Like that's where I would put my money versus hiring an agency. Once you're spending like five to 10 grand a month, that's when I would yeah. go. I think that you can get more by having a professional actually manage it. Yeah, I agree. I think we started, we started having somebody manage it it was back in uh, like 2015 or 16 when we crossed like four or five grand a month. That was yeah. And that was a big deal. Like I remember, I remember that. And that was like a really, um, it was a big deal. I, I, cause we went from zero, you know, we'd never spent anything on marketing. It was, yeah, yeah it was, <laughs> that was, that was a while ago. Next one is LSA dying. Seems like there are a lot of changes happening. Google potentially getting split up by the government. Wow, okay, got some conspiracy theories, love it. Will that affect things like GMB and LSA? Uh, LSA is definitely not dying. Uh, if anything, Google is pushing 
further into that, um, Google wants to do its best to spend as much of your money as possible. And LSA is a really good one um, because it's easy enough to get on your own. So a lot of people get in there, have no idea what they're doing and spend way too yeah. much money in there when they shouldn't be. Um, and yeah. then uh, obviously they just they make so much money through this. So it's not going to die. It's only going to get more. Um, mm -hmm more into it um there are a lot of changes you need to be up to date on those changes um things like your uh, there's no more lsa link you only yep. have your google business profile link it's the same yep. thing i don't know anything about them split and being split up by the government i doubt it they have way too much they have way too much control to be split up by something <laughs> as, as tiny as the u.s government now granted we have started in shoulder season we're seeing less search volume right now um, yeah. And so when we were in a uh, when we were in like the summer seasons, high of summer, like the the clients that were on track to hit their lead volume was closer to like 95 percent. Like it was just absurd. Uh, since then, we've had a dip in that we're hitting closer to like 65, 70 percent of all mm. our clients are hitting their lead volume, uh, which hurts and sucks. Right. So we're, we're talking to clients about, OK, hey, how do we move that budget somewhere else? Uh, we've talked to clients about, uh, you know, like just being aware of those situations, shoulder yeah. season, like you still want to keep showing up as often as possible um, and having those conversations. Um, but like, again, we still have like 65 to 70 percent of all our clients who are running LSAs still hitting their numbers. So, yeah. like, you know, it works. You just got to play the game right. Yeah. Um, one, I, I fully agree. And two, I just want to hit that like down season part real quick in shoulder season. So like September and March, April, like leads are going to be way more precious. Like every single lead matters just so much. Um, so like keep the marketing machine going always. Uh, but what gets more important, the bigger and bigger you get is like, Hey, shoulder season exists. And there is literally nothing that any marketing agency will ever do for you it's going to solve the fact that April and September are months in the year. Like that's it. Like they're always going to be months in the year. I mean, I guess Pluto is no longer a planet. So maybe something crazy could happen, but like they're always going to be a problem. So like what you have to figure out as soon as you can is, is like, okay, if I need 10 calls a day, I just need 10 calls a day. I hit 10, 11 calls a day, no problem and peak. And I just can't get above seven in in down season, that's okay. Like you and literally every other business in the entire freaking world. And um, like, one, so here's how you sort of fix it. One, you don't turn off marketing. Like that's not the problem. Marketing isn't the problem. Um, people need heat. They don't need heat when it's 60 degrees night and day in September. It's, you know, it's a demand problem. Uh, but two, figuring out what the gap between your demand and your calls needed is like one of the biggest movers that you can have in your business. So when you're starting to dial that in and you're like, all right, I need 10, I'm at seven because that's what, you know, that's how many people have a need for me today. Then how do I find the other three? And the reality is you're not going to find them using conventional marketing. Like for the most part, you're going to find them with outbounding your customers, or you're going to find them. Um, I mean, that's honestly the big one, or like, that's a really great place where a membership plan comes in. So you can use it to pick up your shoulder seasons and you don't have a lull in April because you're doing tune-ups. So there's a bunch of strategies around how to solve that. The big thing is like seasonality will always be a thing and you have to have a plan around it and pushing more dollars into marketing isn't a plan because there's not enough demand. Like people aren't looking for emergency, no heat service in April. And like, no one can fix that problem for you. Uh, so you just have to find another way. Um, and that's where, you know, one of the things that I've, I've been talking to uh, certain people on is like, hey, the, the search volume isn't there. You were prepared to spend five grand in LSA yeah. this month. What are your yeah. thoughts about throwing that to, uh, to SEO? Um, and because one of the things that we're trying to play around with is, not just have like a standard SEO package where it's like, hey, this is a flat rate. We're just going to do this yeah. month over month over month. But like also being able to offer like, hey, here's a keyword. We're at like yeah. 10. And I know that if we go buy like 
three grand worth of backlinks that we could probably shoot up the ranks. Can we have that? Can we have that money so we can go buy these uh, and just get them really quickly uh, or yeah. you know, whatever it takes? So like, we're trying to find ways that like you're not spending the money that you already plan to. You've already have it budgeted. Your mm-hmm. your owners already you know if we're working with like a director of marketing or something, like that, you've already gotten this approved. How can we just take that and help you go rank higher so that when we do hit that season where things are coming in, it's even better. Um, and SEO is one yeah, of those I'm, things that I'm will really, help you in that shoulder season. Yeah. Um, no, it, de- it definitely will. But I'm really into that. I, I heard uh, that somebody earlier today was talking to me about a concept that I've literally never heard of in my life. And this reminds me of that a little bit. And it's basically responsive SEO. And obviously SEO like takes a second, but this, yeah, this kind of, that's really similar. Honestly, now I'm thinking about what I'm going to do in April. We, we started, uh, we launched a, this, now this is back to SEO, but like SEO is, is ridiculous. Like if you hit it hard, um, it's insane, but we, uh, so September, like SEO used to do almost nothing for us. And we did 200,000 of revenue attributed to SEO in September, in September, like it, it was insane. Um, so we were, uh, we're working on this SEO project now. We're like, Hey, can we pump as much as humanly possible for like 30 days on water quality? And like, how can that create an impact in November and December and January for water leads? And now I'm like, yeah, I should probably do that for like air quality too. I frankly wasn't even thinking, I'm, you know, my own medicine here. But like, I should be, I should be thinking about that for April. It's a good idea, Sam. It's a good idea. Uh, Take it. Call, Run with it. I'm going to call Janelle and get her up on that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I will even say that something interesting with the SEO is, uh, did you hear about like Google changing its API indexing? No. So uh, Google, we used to use uh, a bunch of different tools to index your page. What I mean by that yeah. for people who don't know what that is, is basically uh, Google has the entire internet to crawl and read. How does it know to read yeah. your article? Is It gets indexed into its big, vast doc systems, filing systems, if you will. We used to force feed it. Uh, and just basically like, hey, like eat this. Like this is the document, this is the article, go. And so it would take us like one to two weeks to get something indexed. They've killed that. So no longer can you do that. So like everything is now on Google's time. Like they're literally companies, big, you know, multi, you know, $10 million software companies shut down overnight uh, because of it. And so uh, wow. you can no longer and, do it. And that must just be like AI just forcing out so much written content that they literally couldn't keep up. It's yeah. got to be something like that. So... Uh, basically, Honestly, what it means that makes like sense when, because we started our ranking started slowing down uh, for like keywords that we were ranking for, and I'm yeah. like, what the heck happened, dude? It dude, sucks because we were talking. Um, we sold a, pro- a programmatic, uh, a programmatic build, which is like a yeah. thousand pages in thirty days. Yes, yeah, um, crazy. And bef- we like sold it, telling the guy. Hey, like, and we'll, we have this, we have this software, it'll index this, yeah. it'll be all like indexed within like 30 days after that. And then like, they changed it after we sold the first, we went back to like, Hey, it's actually gonna take like four to six weeks. Just heads up. He was a nice guy. So he, he understood. So, so do you think like, is that the promise that they've given like four to six weeks? Um, no, Google doesn't promise things. We just like, that's the, <laughs> that's what marketing used to be before we started doing this so we assume it's just going to go back yeah. to that same amount it might not be it might take longer um if you if you know anything about marketing and you want the way to make that happen is make sure you log into your google console go to the pages yeah. and then submit the pages um and it should run through it it should help that's basically the fastest way that you can do it also your sitemap making sure your sitemap is updated with those pages that 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 too will help with that. Well, walked away with something new. Um, I think we have time for one more question. Um, we got a couple of questions uh, by Mitch in the comments. Should we ask, answer those? Uh, yeah, heck yeah. So Mitch Kinney says, how do companies get so big so quick? What are they doing to get so many new customers so quickly? 
my first answer is they're spending a lot. Uh, like the guy, the conversation I had on Monday, he's got four techs and he's like, Hey, I, I yeah. need to feed them. I need 10 leads a day. And I was like, well, you're gonna spend 25 grand this month. So like, that is one way to get bigger faster. I, I think there's a lot here. Uh, so as a company who got big fast, it definitely starts with leads. Like it does, like who's got the leads? Um, how do you, how do you manage that? And it, it's kind of interesting because there's, um, it's, it becomes like cumulative advantage. Maybe that's the way I want to say this. So there's the, like this cu cumulative advantage where, okay, if every single day I come in and improve something by like 1%, um, 1% is a lot of money now. 1% is for us $260,000 a year, a day, or, you know, that's or one, that's 1% is $260,000. So uh, if I come in and improve something incrementally, um, the people that we're leaving behind get a bigger and bigger wall of things that they would need to improve in order to catch up. And I think um, for a couple of years, it wasn't as noticeable as it's getting. And some of the advantages that I'm seeing that we have, and I like look around at, at sort of the competitive landscape and I'm like, wow, we are um like i don't remember getting this big and i and like why didn't you and then i look at a lot of the stuff we're doing and it is like a, it's across the board it's operational improvement it's having all the leads so like sam said spending like crazy like in order to spend like crazy you need to have the infrastructure to be able to run and close on those leads like spending a million dollars a year doesn't help you if you don't close any of them like if you're closing at a 20 percent closing rate like you can't it doesn't do anything for you yeah operational improvement cumulative improvement of like, okay, today I'm going to tweak our call booking rate. Today I'm going to tweak our average ticket. Today I'm going to add this new software to do this thing. And now the moat to catch up gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And like big companies, like the bigger you get in our industry, the bigger you get, because you get, you have this like ridiculous series of advantages um, that take years to overcome. So I, I think, yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot there. I think definitely marketing, definitely leads, um, but like what's going on in the operation of the business? Like, how are you supporting that? What does your hiring look like? What does your pay packages look like? What's your pricing look like? How's your sales process work? What's your call booking look like? And each one of those is like a 90 day project, if not a year. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, but like, if you continue to, um, if you continue to do these like continuous improvements and these like 1% improvements, uh, like in October this month, we're going to finish up at $2.7 million, which is insane. Uh, yeah. Like that beat my previous record by half a million dollars. That's and cool. like we hit our first $2 million month in May and we'll probably hit our first $3 million month either in December or January. And that's just us continuing to get better every single day, get better every single day and like focus on the fundamentals that I already listed off. Conversion rate, call booking rate, what's your recruitment look like? What's your sales process look like? <laughs> and then on top of all that, you spend a shitload of money. <laughs> you yeah. get as many leads as you possibly can. But it's sort of like you build, like the machine that you build has to be able to effectively spit out sales once you get those leads and that's the real thing that you're building yeah and i know we got like 60 seconds so i'll keep my answer short um but i've built multiple agencies at this point uh sort of scale is just definitely the fastest growing agency mm -hmm. that uh, we had um and so we're at like 10k in january we're sitting we're, we're we're projected out right now to make two million this year uh which is insane mm -hmm. and it's amazing the things that I've done differently this round is leads, right? Like I have very good lead sources and multiple mm -hmm. channels coming through um, and then accountability on the team, uh, right? So every Monday I have meetings with department heads. What are we gonna mm -hmm. do differently? The 1% chance difference that yep. we're gonna make. Uh, we, every Wednesday, we have a leadership meeting with all the different things that we, like everybody has to say, these were the goals for this quarter and we either on mm -hmm. track or off track for hitting those. And then we see our numbers weekly. 
uh, multiple times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, everyone has to be accountable for those numbers continuing to go. Um, and that has been huge. So know your numbers, stay accountable, make sure that you, your team knows that too. Yeah. And like, you can, uh, you can also get big, like you can like, yes, we've created a big moat, but like the moat is passable. So we have to continue to get better because technology is going to keep getting better and it's going to keep giving advantages to people that can move quick. And that's only getting faster and faster. Like if something new drops now, like we, we execute with vigor so yeah. that we can continue to stay ahead of the curve. So you owe it to yourself. Pressure. We feel the pressure. <laughs> yeah. You owe it to yourself and your team to get bigger. Like you need to, uh, it's yeah. a lot more security. Uh, it's a lot better game to play. Yeah. No, I agree. This is great. I feel this like we saw fun. some, hopefully solve some good, uh, questions. If you have any more, feel free to send them in. I think we can answer them on uh, another pod. Let's do it. Let's do it. Thanks all for tuning in. Thanks for having me on. Uh, adios. <laughs>